Hello and welcome to my channel, where I share with you the best books for personal growth and happiness. Today I'm going to talk about one of the books that helped me change my life and helped me become more kind and compassionate to myself. It's called Self-Compassion, The Proven Power of Being Kind to Yourself by Dr. Kristen Neff. Do you struggle with low self-esteem, anxiety, depression, or stress? If so, you're not alone. Many of us suffer from a lack of self-compassion, which is the ability to treat ourselves with the same kindness and understanding that we would offer to a friend. Self-compassion is not a new concept, but it's one that has been gaining more attention and popularity in recent years, thanks to the groundbreaking research and work of Dr. Kristen Neff. She is an associate professor of educational psychology at the University of Texas at Austin and one of the world's leading experts on self-compassion. She has published over 100 academic articles and book chapters on the topic, as well as this best-selling book, which was first published in 2011 and has sold over half a million copies worldwide. In this book, Dr. Neff explains what self-compassion is, why it's so important for our well-being and happiness, and how we can cultivate it in our daily lives. She also shares her own personal stories, as well as practical exercises and tips that we can use to practice self-compassion and overcome our self-criticism and negative emotions. So what are the main ideas from this book? Let's find out. The first idea is that self-compassion is composed of three elements, self-kindness, common humanity, and mindfulness. Self-kindness means being gentle, supportive, and understanding with ourselves when we suffer, fail, or feel inadequate. It means recognizing that we are human beings who make mistakes and have limitations, and that we deserve love and care regardless of our flaws. Self-kindness also means avoiding harsh judgments, comparisons, and expectations that can hurt our self-esteem and confidence. Common humanity means recognizing that we are not alone in our struggles and suffering. It means acknowledging that everyone goes through difficulties and challenges in life, and that we share a common bond with all living beings. Common humanity also means avoiding isolation, alienation, and shame that can make us feel separate and different from others. Mindfulness means being aware of our present moment experience with openness and curiosity. It means observing our thoughts, feelings, sensations, and actions without suppressing or exaggerating them. Mindfulness also means avoiding over-identification, rumination, or avoidance that can distort our perception of reality and ourselves. The second idea is that self-compassion is more beneficial than self-esteem for our mental health and happiness. Self-esteem is the evaluation of our worth or value as a person. It's often based on external factors such as achievements, appearance, popularity, or social comparison. While having high self-esteem can make us feel good about ourselves, it can also have some drawbacks. For example, Self-esteem can be unstable and fluctuate depending on our successes or failures. Self-esteem can be contingent on meeting certain standards or expectations that may be unrealistic or unhealthy. Self-esteem can lead to narcissism, arrogance, or aggression when we feel superior or inferior to others. Self-esteem can create anxiety, depression, or stress when we feel insecure or inadequate. Self-compassion, on the other hand, is the acceptance of ourselves as we are. It's based on internal factors such as kindness, understanding, and connection. While having self-compassion can also make us feel good about ourselves, it has some advantages over self-esteem. For example, self-compassion is stable and consistent regardless of our successes or failures. Self-compassion is unconditional and does not depend on meeting certain standards or expectations that may be unrealistic or unhealthy. Self-compassion is humble, respectful, and compassionate when we relate to others. 
Self-compassion is soothing, healing, and motivating when we face difficulties or challenges. The third idea is that self-compassion can help us overcome various psychological problems and enhance our well-being and happiness. Dr. Neff provides ample evidence from her own research and other studies that show how self-compassion can have positive effects on various aspects of our mental health and happiness. For instance, self-compassion can reduce stress, anxiety, depression, shame, guilt, anger, and other negative emotions that can harm our mental health. Self-compassion can increase resilience, optimism, happiness, gratitude, joy, and other positive emotions that can boost our well-being. Self-compassion can improve our relationships with ourselves and others by fostering trust, intimacy, empathy, and support. Self-compassion can enhance our personal growth and development by encouraging curiosity, learning, creativity, and courage. The fourth idea is that self-compassion can be learned and practiced through various exercises and techniques. Dr. Neff offers many practical exercises and tips that we can use to cultivate self-compassion in our daily lives. Some of these exercises include 1. Writing a letter to ourselves from the perspective of a compassionate friend who cares about us and understands us. 2. Giving ourselves a physical gesture of warmth and comfort such as a hug, a pat on the back, or a gentle touch on the cheek. 3. Repeating some positive affirmations or mantras that express kindness and acceptance to ourselves such as, I am enough. I am doing my best. Or, I am worthy of love. 4. Practicing mindfulness meditation or breathing exercises that help us calm our mind and body and become more aware of our present moment experience. 5. Engaging in activities that nourish our soul and make us happy such as listening to music, reading a book, taking a walk in nature, or spending time with loved ones. The final idea is that self-compassion is not selfish or weak but rather a source of strength and courage. Some people may think that self-compassion is selfish or weak because it means being soft or indulgent with ourselves. However, this is a misconception. Self-compassion is not selfish or weak but rather a source of strength and courage. Here's why. First of all, self-compassion is not selfish because it does not mean ignoring or neglecting others. On the contrary, self-compassion helps us care for others more effectively by reducing our stress and increasing our empathy. Secondly, self-compassion is not weak because it does not mean giving up or avoiding challenges. On the contrary, self-compassion helps us face challenges more confidently by reducing our fear and increasing our motivation. So these are the main ideas from this amazing book. I hope you enjoyed this summary and learned something new. If you want to read the full book or learn more about Dr. Kristen Neff and her work on self-compassion, you can check out the links in the description below. But before you go, I want to leave you with a motivational conclusion. Remember that you are not alone in your struggles and suffering. You are part of a common humanity that shares the same joys and sorrows as you do. You are also a unique and valuable person who deserves love and respect from yourself and others. So be kind to yourself. Be compassionate to yourself. And be happy with yourself. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more book summaries and reviews. And don't forget to comment below what book you want me to summarize next. Until then, stay safe and stay positive.